Hello everyone and welcome to an introduction to Unreal. So the idea is to build a scene in Houdini and then export it to Unreal Engine and then render it over there. Okay, so the final result is going to be this. Okay, so it's just a simple sort of like a motion graphic style animation that I did in Houdini and I set up the lighting and shaders and everything in Unreal. So just to be clear, I am not interested in gaming. Okay. My entire uh, aim with Unreal is to use it as a render engine. Okay, So the idea is how fast can we get renders? Okay, Because even something as simple as this, if you're going to try and do it uh, even on a GPU based renderer, like whether it's Redshift or Octane, it's not going to be real time. Like this is this is pretty much just running real time. So the, the idea is to primarily use Unreal as a render engine so you can get you know renders done faster. So the topics that we're going to cover are you know building a basic scene in Houdini, then export it as a Lembic to Unreal. The one thing to remember is all of this is based on RTX. Okay, so if uh, if you genuinely want to use Unreal as a proper full-fledged render engine, it's good to have an RTX card. Okay, now I'm not looking at uh, like proper real time in the sense that I don't want the scene to run at 60 FPS or even 30 FPS. Even if it gives me 5 FPS, it's fine. Okay, because at the end of the day, I just want to do an offline render, right? I don't want to do like an interactive scene. Okay, so uh, just make sure you have an RTX card. I think the lowest one is like a 2060. Okay, so I don't know if a 2050 has RTX or not. Okay, but anyways. Okay, and then uh, we build uh, materials in Unreal and do some color grading using what's called as a post-process volume. And then finally, we add like a, a master sequence so we can have like multiple camera angles and then do a final uh, animation render out of Unreal. Okay, so that is the whole thing. So this won't be like one video. It might be about four or five videos. Okay, so to start off with, uh, we're going to start with Houdini. Okay, so because we need to build our you know basic animation and our basic scene. So I'm going to close this and we're going to start with Houdini. All right, so to get started, my scene is built up of two things. Like I have a background okay, and I have this object. Okay, like this little animation that I have. So in this video, we're going to build up our basic scene and in the next one, we'll start with Unreal. Okay, so let's just get started all right so we're going to start by building the background so i'll take a simple geometry and i'll make a grid and what i want to do is i want the grid to be vertical so we'll keep it to let's do uh, y z plane or just hold on let me just take a test rubber toy as well i want to see which side it's facing okay no not this way so x y plane yeah this is good Okay, and uh, what I want to do is I want to place it here, like at zero, uh, like this corner should be at zero. So I'm going to take a transform and I'm going to do in the X, I'll do minus dollar X min. Okay, so it will move it here. And then in the Y axis, we'll do the same thing. So minus dollar Y min. Okay, and that will bring us you know, into the corner over there. The second thing is I just wanted to have like, you know, two and two segments. Now what I want is I just want like an L shape. So the simplest way to do it is take a car and just turn on the first U and the second U and it'll just give you this. But we want the base. So come to the cut, turn off, keep inside and turn on, keep outside. Okay, so that will give you this thing. Now, the reason I'm doing it this way is because like, then it becomes kind of procedural, right? Because I can take this and then if I adjust it, see, I can actually like, you know, adjust the sides. Okay, and then uh, what I want to do is I want to give it a slight rounding over there. But what the carve is going to do is it's going to disconnect all the points, right? Like you can see here, it's, it's actually like two separate points over there. So what you want to do is you want to take a fuse after the carve. So it'll like, you know, merge everything and then take a poly bevel and I'll keep this to points and I'm just going to bevel this and give it a slight bit of rounding. Okay, so this is good. 
Now the next step is we just want to give it some thickness or actually like lengthwise. So just take a sweep. So the reason for using a sweep is very simple. It gives you automatic UVs, okay, which is a good thing. So we're going to take a sweep and set the surface shape to ribbon and then come into, we need to rotate it. Okay, so we'll come down to like the rotation and the apply pitch is on and roll that to 90. There you go. Okay, so you'll get it like this. And what you want to do is you want to get rid of the columns. We'll bring it down to one and then get the width to about, uh, let's try 20. Yeah, so we'll have this. So this is perfect. And then all you need to do is come into UVs and turn on compute UVs. Well, this is fine. Like it's just splitting it up. And if I take something like quick shade, so you take a UV quick shade so we can visualize it. See, that's what you'll get. So this is, this is perfectly fine. This is good. Okay. Now another thing you want to do is you also want to give it some normals because uh, otherwise like these will come in faceted when you bring it into, into unreal. So just take a normal node and yeah, that's pretty much it. Like you don't need to do anything else. Okay. So this will just make sure that it has normals when it gets imported. Okay. So this is good. This is the base that we want. So the idea is, uh, I'm not using any, uh, like Houdini engine or any of that stuff. Okay. This is just, as I said, like, you know, build a scene, export it as like OBJ or Alembic into unreal and set up a render. So next, like, as we, as I get more into it, I'll, you know, start doing stuff with Houdini engine, but right now I'm not. Okay. So the next thing is we need to build the animation. So initially I was going to do this with mops, but uh, I couldn't get it to work. So I just figured I'll just do it normally. Okay. So I have this guy and what I want to do first of all is uh, I want to get rid of the insides. So I'm just going to take a Boolean union and that will get rid of the insides. And then I'll just subdivide it once. Okay. I think this is good. Okay, so the next thing is I'm going to remesh it okay, because I want like the points to be equidistant. So when I copy, you know, other shapes on it, it looks uniform. So I'm going to take a remesh. Right. And then uh, what I want to do is I want to get the target size to around 0 0.06. Okay, so it'll give me this. And then I also want to get the iterations up to eight. So it's a little more see it's it's a little more uniformly spaced. Let's get it to 0 0.05. All right. So the next thing is I want it to sort of uh, like the idea was to have these shapes kind of grow over it. And the best way or the simplest way to do that is using this uh, new node called as the pyro source spread. Okay. Which is pretty much like a growth solver. Okay. So, you know, all of those things that you see, like a diffusion aggregation and all of those things, so they're like growth based things. So this is pretty much just a growth based thing. Okay. And, uh, the way it works is you need to take a group and you need to set up some points to have a temperature value. Okay. And then the, the source spread will take that temperature and just spread it across your geometry which then you can feed it into like a pyro solver to have like fire spread across something. But in our case, we'll just use that attribute to control like P scale or something. So what I'll do is I'm going to set this to points and we'll call it uh, grow and turn off base group and turn on bounding regions. And what I want to do is I wanted to start from the front and the back. So uh, let's, let's take something like I'll take this here. So this is going to be one point. I'll just make it small. Yeah. And then I'll copy paste this do control C control V. I'll set this the initial merge to union with existing. And this one I'll start it off at the nose. Okay. So we have these two points. Okay. So then take a wrangle. And what you want to do is you just want to set temperature. Okay. So the group will be grow. And we'll do F at temperature is equal to one. 
Okay, and then just take the pyro spread and connect it. So I'm just I'm just going to save this file. Okay, and in order to visualize it, you want to visualize the burn. Okay, so just turn that on and you'll see this. And if you press play, you'll start to see it spread. Now it doesn't spread too much because the cooling rate is too high. What we want is we wanted to cover the entire thing. So the first thing you want to do is you want to get the cooling rate to around like 0.3 or 0.4 and see there you go. So that will do the first thing. The second thing is you want to increase the rate a little bit and also the search radius. See, so that does the second thing. And uh, what is also happening is there is a noise in there. Okay, so the noise curve is going from zero to one. So there are some areas where it won't spread at all. So what you want to do is you want to take this zero and just kind of increase it. So there is some value over there so it can spread. That's why you're getting those blank patches. But yeah. So we can then try to readjust it. So I can lower the rate if I want to slow it down a bit. And that isn't bad. Let's try to lower the rate even more. Yeah, I think this is good. And we can try to increase the cooling rate. So you can just sort of play around with it. Yeah, okay. Maybe slightly lower. Okay, so this is perfect. So you can you can visualize burn, you can also visualize like total burn. Total burn is what we're going to use because it is a little more smoother. Okay, like burn has a very harsh line to it. Total burn is a little bit more gentler. Okay, but the problem with total burn is if I switch this to like a geometry spreadsheet, the total burn value sort of keeps increasing. Okay, like if I come here to, let's just see if we can find these guys. Yeah, so burn goes from zero to one. See, so you can see here it just goes from zero to one, but total burn, keeps going up see so you can see like once it starts to spread see it's going up to like 10 15 so if you feed this into a p scale your objects will keep growing so the first thing we want to do is we want to take our total burn and we want to clamp it down okay so i'm going to turn this off i'll go back to none i'll take a wrangle and i'm going to set this as at total burn is equal to I'll just clamp it and the same thing. So at total burn comma zero comma one. So it will make sure that it doesn't go over one. Okay. So we'll just clamp this. I'm going to copy this because I'm going to need it later. And then if I just feed this into like a P scale. Okay. So I'll just take another angle. You can do it in the same one, but just for, you know, we'll just call it P scale and I'll call it say at P scale is equal to at total burn. Okay. And then what I can do is I can just take, let's take a platonic solid and I'm going to set this to octahedral and I'm going to give it normals as well. Yeah. Just, you know, lower it and then I'll take a copy to points. Also make it really tiny. And so I can just copy it to this and what we should get is see this thing just grows. Okay. Which if I get rid of this guy, you'll see this, is, this is what will happen. See, it keeps kind of growing. Okay. Which is not what you want. Okay. Now this is the basic, but what I want is, uh, I wanted to have like a rippling effect in it. Okay. Like if you see this, it kind of just ripples. Like if I don't bring in the color, you'll see it sort of like has like this ripple that goes through it. See. Okay. So the way to do that is we're going to use a chop network. Okay. Uh, let's also do one thing. Let's make this slightly smaller and let's increase the number of points. Yeah. So let's come back to the remesh. And I'll make it like 0 0.03. So let's go back to our pyro source spread and revisualize this. Yeah, turn on total burn. Let's see what we get. 
yeah so if you feel like it's taking longer then just increase the rate or lower the cooling rate like either ways is fine okay so what i want to do first of all is like after the clamp so let's call it clamp so after the clamp i also want to blur it a little bit okay so i'm going to take an attribute blur and we're going to blur total burn yeah see so i'm going to get a little bit like this so that even in the p scale it's a little more you know see it's a little more gentle the second thing is uh, let's turn off this is we want to add in the uh, we want to add in the ripple okay so the way to do it is uh, we can do it via chops okay so take a chop network and i want to bring it in after the blur okay so i'm going to bring it in here so let's call this out and let's also put in like a color node so we can visualize this okay so we're going to take a color here and set this to ramp from attribute and total burn okay so we we can visualize this okay so let's come into chop network the first thing we want is we want to take a geometry and we want to bring in this guy and it will be animated okay so we're going to come to sop and bring in out the attribute scope is total burn and the output is also going to be total burn okay the next thing is to take a spring so take a spring solver just we're just going to connect it for now no, i'm not going to do anything and then i'm going to bring it out so let's call this out now if you've done everything right what you need to do after the out over here at sop level is take a channel so the channel node will bring in the data from the chop network into my geometry and what i want to do is the chop i want is called out this is so once you bring it in it will start to calculate okay we want it to be animated and the scope is total burn and the attribute we want to modify is also total burn now if you've done it right you'll see something else see there you go so you get the spring solver working in now what i want to do is uh, we want to make some slight changes okay so first of all like just to show you you know what the spring solver can do is if it's really low then you're just going to get like a single wave like we just get like one wave going behind it that's pretty much it the second thing is we can damp it so that the wave kill off faster so even if the spring constant is high the damping will kill it off faster and then the mass if you increase it it sort of makes the wave stronger so what what you can do is the best way is you you just visualize it so if I, if i bring it in here see there you go so if i come back to chop network and if i lower the damping and let's say we increase the spring constant please you'll get like you'll get too many waves it will just never stop okay and we can lower the mass value yeah and then let's do this we'll just increase the damping constant to around 3 or 4 so that should kill it fast for us yeah there you go that looks nice and of course if you make any changes you know above the network it will uh, have to recalculate okay so like like let's say if i come into the attribute blur and let's say we blur it to around like 4 so you'll see it recalculate down here okay it's not far it's not slow uh, it depends on the amount of geometry but uh, there you go so this will be a little bit more gentler okay so this is good now the only thing we want to do with the color is uh, because i'm going to use the color in unreal okay what i want is i want there to be uh, like a glow on these edges like all of this stuff i want to glow and everything else should be a normal color so what what we want is uh, something like a black white and a black 
So let's just put a black here as well. Yeah, there you go. So something like that. Okay. Wherein like when it's forming, it's bright and then it kind of, you know, fades out slowly over time. So what this will do is uh, I can bring it into Unreal and use this in like an emission channel and then have it glow at that point. But yeah, the pyro spread is actually a pretty good node. Like you can do some really nice and fancy things with it. As I said, I was trying to get this to work with uh, mops, but I kind of got confused and lost and I couldn't make it work. But yeah, this is a nice enough technique just to know in Houdini. All right, so that's pretty much it. So this is, these are the two things that we need. We have our base and we have our animation. And uh, the only thing left is I want to export this. So let's export this, right? So I'm just going to take a ROP Alembic output. And uh, another thing I'll do is I'll just delete a lot of these attributes. Okay, so I'm just going to take a delete. So we'll take an attribute delete over here. And what I want to do is I want to get rid of, uh, yeah, I want to get rid of the, the burn, the diff rate, fuel, fuel gain, rest, temperature, total burn. Okay. We don't need any of these. So what we want is just the color and the position and the P scale. Yeah. Get rid of the burn as well. Okay. Yeah, so just like we just have the color and the normals and this. Okay, that's good enough. Okay, and then we're going to export 240 frames and we'll just set it up. So I'll just call it toy form and plug it in and hit render. So yeah, just do save to disk. So if you want to check it, I can take an alembic node and just check it. Yeah, there you go. So we have this. Okay, so that is good. And then we just want to export the base that we built. So I can just take this and right click here, save geometry. I actually have it here, but let's, you know, let's export it again. So just hit accept. And that's it. Okay, so the next video, we're going to start importing this into Unreal and do a basic setup.